While many women have been convicted of murdering their husband for insurance money, few have done so with the coldness of Stacey Castor. She showed no remorse for killing her loved ones and those who trusted her deeply. Let's unfold the case of Stacey Castor, also known as the Black Widow. Stacey met her first husband, Michael, at the age of 17. They married a few years later in 1988, describing the mutual attraction as love at first sight. Immediately after their marriage, Stacey felt incredibly empty and unfulfilled. She felt like she needed to go through the motion of having children, so she gave birth to her first daughter, Ashley, later in the same year, and their second daughter, Bree, followed in 1991. A few months after Bree's birth, Stacey began to notice Michael clearly favoured Bree and barely acknowledged Ashley. Stacey got incredibly upset and decided to become extremely close to Ashley to get back at Michael, calling her her best friend. The relationship between the couple started to break down and they rarely saw each other, with Stacey working in the ambulance and her husband Michael was a mechanical engineer, primarily during night shifts. Eventually, it would get really bad to the point they were each rumoured to having their own affairs. In 1999, just before Christmas, Michael felt unwell, experiencing sudden headaches, coughs and dizziness. He later went to a doctor and was diagnosed with a near infection. He was then given medication to take. Unfortunately, this didn't improve his symptoms. In January 2000, Ashley returned home one day and she saw Michael lying on the sofa thinking he was just taking a nap so she left him to it. Then she sat beside him for 30 minutes and eventually she got bored so left the house to go and find her mother and sister. Upon arrival back to the house, they found Michael lying there no longer breathing. The ambulance was immediately called, unfortunately he was pronounced dead at the scene and the doctors concluded Michael suffered from a heart attack. After his death, Stacey had become incredibly close to her daughters. They had a really strong bond. However, this didn't last and in 2002, Stacey met David, causing her to completely neglect her daughters. David was previously married with a son and he was the boss of a home maintenance and repair company. Stacey met David through a mutual friend. There was an instant attraction between the two. Eventually, they would spend more time with each other as Stacey started to work for him. Not only were they spending time together at work, the couple also enjoyed outdoor activities and their relationship developed rapidly. In 2003, Stacey and David got married. Stacey moved into David's house along with Ashley and Bree. The relationship between Stacey's daughter and David were very difficult to begin with but improved with time. And eventually, Ashley and Bree would see David as their father figure. Everything seems to be improving for the better. In August 2005, Stacey called the police and said they had an argument which left David very upset, so he locked himself in the room for one whole day. Stacey tried to convince him to come out, but he wouldn't respond. She got really worried so called the police. The police arrived and kicked the bedroom door open only to find David lying on the bed with no signs of breathing. Stacy went absolutely ballistic and kept on shouting, he's not dead, he's not dead. However, it was clear David had passed away. This had a massive impact on Ashley, as she even wrote a letter to her friend, telling her she's considering hurting herself. An autopsy was conducted and they found Michael committed suicide through an overdose of antifreeze. However, police found Stacy's fingerprint on both the bottle of antifreeze and on the turkey baster. Upon further investigating Stacey, they also found that Michael Wallace had passed away just five years ago and this has raised suspicion. With Stacey being their prime suspect, they placed a hidden audio recorder at Stacey's house with a camera set to record the outside of the house as well as the burial ground. The investigators thought the only way to identify whether Stacey was involved in both the killing was to do an autopsy on Wallace. Results found he had suffered from poisoning prior to his death. On the first day of university, Ashley was questioned by the police about her father's death and they told her Michael Wallace died of poisoning and not a heart attack. At this point, Ashley was both upset and confused about what had just been said to her so she went to Stacy for help. They talked about the problem and Stacy later invited Ashley over. 
Stacey then handed Ashley a cup of strongly mixed alcohol and immediately Ashley felt unwell and had to go to sleep. Later in the evening, younger sister Bree came back home to go and see Ashley. However, Stacey rejected and insisted she leave her sister alone, giving her time to rest. Early next morning, as Brie was getting ready to go to school, she was about to leave the house but remembered Ashley, so she ran to Ashley's room. As she opened the bedroom door, laying there was Ashley's still body. No response was given no matter how hard Brie tried to wake her up. At this point, Stacy entered the room. Brie looked at her in absolute shock and told her to immediately call the police. Stacy, however, took her time, slowly picked up the phone and eventually the police was called. Brie then found a letter beside Ashley's bedside cabinet, written by Ashley herself. In the letter, she admitted to killing both her biological and stepdad, giving the full detail as to how she conducted the murder. Ashley was taken to the hospital and the doctor said if she had arrived a few minutes later, she could have died. When she woke up, the police questioned her about the letter and the murder, which she was completely clueless about. All she can remember was her mother handing her a cup of alcoholic beverage and then she was out of it. She was very confused and insisted she didn't write any letter. This was the expected response from Ashley, as the police had in mind their prime suspect as Stacy. At this point, Stacy was arrested. For the next two years, evidence was gathered to prove Stacy was guilty, and in 2007, she was charged with second degree murder of her husband and for attempting to murder Ashley. The prosecutor said the suicidal note was very informative, matching the evidence gathered at the scene. Only the murderer could have wrote this, and believed whoever wrote the letter was the killer. They argued Ashley was only 11 years old at the time of her father's death and questioned her ability to kill. Although there had been murderers at the age of only 10 years old, such as the case of Robert Thompson and John Fenables, who kidnapped a two years old, brutally attacked him and then killed him, but it was very unlikely in this case Ashley killed her own father. At trial, the prosecutors presented their evidence and they found David died of an overdose of antifreeze, but analysis showed the absence of David's fingerprint on both the bottle of antifreeze and on the turkey baster. However, Stacy's fingerprint was present on both, and David's DNA was only present on the tip of the turkey baster. This implied he must have been force-fed the antifreeze. A second piece of evidence against Stacy was fragments of a deleted document on her laptop. The document was Ashley's alleged suicide note. However, during that time, she was at school. How can she have typed it out on Stacy's laptop? In addition, the suicide note didn't have Ashley's fingerprint on it, but it did, however, contained Stacy's. It was believed money was the main motive behind the murder, as Stacy wanted to collect money from their life insurance payout along with their property and possession. She even went as far as changing David's will to remove his son's name in tiny, leaving him empty-handed. But luckily, his son was awarded all the money he should have been entitled to had it not been for the fraudulent will, as well as the $250,000 in punitive damage. On February the 5th, 2009, Stacy was found guilty of second-degree murder in the poisoning of David and attempted second-degree murder for overdosing Ashley with drugs and vodka. Due to the lack of evidence for Michael's death, Stacy was not charged. Michael's sister was, however, very suspicious of the reason for his death. She described Michael as strong and healthy. She strongly advised Stacy to request her an autopsy, however, this was immediately rejected by Stacy as she said Michael wouldn't want his deceased body to be cut open for examination. Stacy was ordered to serve 51 years in jail with no possibility of parole. On June the 11th, 2016, at the age of 48, Stacy was found dead in her cell and had died of a heart attack. Her daughters made a statement and Ashley said she was stronger because of this. She's a survivor who would continue to live her life and now she's surrounded by people who truly love her. She also said, I never knew what hate was until now. Even though I do hate her, I still love her at the same time. Whereas Bree said she was happy her mother could no longer hurt them. Ashley was strong enough to survive her poisoning and avoid suffering the same fate as her father, testifying against Stacy, preventing her from further meeting men and poisoning them for financial gain, burying each body side by side. The horrific crime made national news and Stacy was subsequently named the Black Widow by the media for her cruel acts towards her loved one. Her story was taken and used in a TV movie called Poisoned Love, the Stacey Caster story. 
Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on this case and I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please do consider subscribing and hit the bell next to it so you're notified every time I upload a new video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.